welcome to Book of Instruction. I'm Sarah Bergstrom, and on the camera is the infamous Uncle Deshaun Jones. Uh, so today I'm going to tell you why you don't want to backfill or set your retaining wall on, on or with dirt. So uh, I'm going to do a series of diagrams for you today, and, um, and then we're going to look at this a little bit. So come on over, and we'll talk about why you don't want to use dirt to fill your wall. D, come over, come over to my beautiful table here. Oh, we're using the trash can. Okay. So, all right, can you see this? Mm -hmm. Okay. So here is your masonry retaining wall block, and you've, you know, you've got it all so that you're setting it into place. And this is uh, your sort of your dirt grade here, and then you've got dirt here as well. And so you think to yourself, ah, I'll just fill this up and backfill it with dirt. Um, and so, so here you go. You've set your masonry blocks straight on dirt. And then you've gone ahead and you've backfilled with dirt. And then you've also filled the cells within the masonry with dirt. We're going to talk about why this is going to ruin your wall if you do it. Um, and, and the, the main reason is that dirt absorbs water and that creates hydrostatic pressure on your masonry. The masonry then absorbs the water. You get efflorescence, freeze thaw cycle, and weeds. So, so here we go. Here's how this hydrostatic uh, pressure issue is working. So water falls from the heavens or you're watering um, you're watering your grass or whatever and the water comes and it goes down through and into um, the dirt it's absorbing into the dirt and then just like with a sponge your masonry starts absorbing that water and then it absorbs into this dirt that you've put in the cells. And then it's got, water has to find a way out. It always needs a way out of a system. And so here it is, you've got water building up um, behind and within and underneath as well, uh, your wall. And eventually your wall really starts filling up with water everything starts getting wet in there. Um, and so, so a natural characteristic of masonry, and this could be like red brick masonry, this can be concrete masonry units, like what my wall is made out of. A any, anything with these natural mineral materials, they have salt inside of them. It's just a naturally occurring salt. And so as the water starts going through this wall, it's going to start washing the salts out of the wall and it's going to deposit these salts which are white in color on the face of the masonry. So let's come over here to the computer Uncle D and you can see that here's a retaining wall. This one happens to be red brick masonry um, but you can see that this wall has likely been backfilled with dirt or it doesn't have a proper drainage provision. You can see that all this white there's a, it's a white powdery stuff that gets all over the face of the wall. And you guys, if you start paying attention to this out in the world, you'll see this all over the place. And it's, it's an in indicator of poor construction. Um, so it should, the masonry should look like this, where it's um, just, and if you get a little closer, there you go. There you can see that nice dark colored masonry. That's, that's good, but all the rest of this is not draining. Um, so that's step one of what's going to happen to your wall if you, um, if you fill it with dirt. And then, so once, once this efflorescence starts happening, um, after that, the next thing that happens is that um, the freeze-thaw cycle and spalling can happen. Now, obviously, this only would happen in cold climates where um, freezing occurs. But what that is, is that... It's where the water basically now starts cracking or is inside the porousness of the wall. 
and when the when the water freezes it expands and when it thaws it gets smaller but that expansion that expansion of the freezing water the ice starts blowing your wall apart and that and here we go here's what spalling looks like so you'll start seeing um the masonry actually start popping off. You can see right in there where the little hand cursor is. It's literally sheeting off um, and popping off. There's a little piece of it on the ground there. Uh, and so that's what eventually can happen to your wall if you live in a freezing climate. So basically this wall, it, it blows itself apart and it looks really bad. Uh, so that's the reason. And it's all because of that hydrostatic pressure. Um, it's all because of this, that hydrostatic pressure working its way through the wall. So now let's build the wall right. So instead of, um, instead of using dirt on the back of it, now we're gonna fill it up with what we filled it with here. We're gonna fill it with three quarter inch granite gravel. I have this back behind the wall, I have it in the cells, and I also have it beneath the wall in a channel. So here we go. Here's your wall again. Now this time we're gonna fill it up with granite gravel instead. And so the thing about the granite gravel is that it's what's known as a free draining material. And it's free draining because it creates void space between each little piece of gravel and that breaks the hydrostatic pressure. So let's look at this next one. This is so beautiful and simple. Now as water rains from the heavens and is inside the dirt, it's, it's going to drop. It's going to drop that water. So here's your dirt wall, right? Here's the wall that you've dug out um, back behind here. And so the water is that's naturally sort of inside the soils and that's falling, it's, it's going to f come to the surface via hydrostatic pressure um, of this back channel behind your wall and then it's gonna drop because there are voids all in between all of these little pieces of granite. And so now you've dropped the water down and, and now it's gonna go into its channel and flow out in your minimum 2% uh, drainage channel. So that's basically why you need to use a three quarter inch granite gravel um, so that it'll break the hydrostatic pressure within the dirt. And that way water never reaches, right? So here's the back of your wall back here, right? Water never reaches that. It doesn't even get close, right? It's never gonna make its way across this. It's always gonna drop down every single time. And if you happen to get a little bit of water inside the wall, which can happen, I mean, this is a dry stacked wall, same exact thing, the water is gonna drop down and go into the drainage channel. And so your whole wall now, here's your whole wall, is basically surrounded by drying. The wall is never gonna really get wet or saturated with water. Um, and so, so that's, that's the reason that we do this. Uh, it's really, really important to understand and remember hydrostatic pressure. Now, there's also a reason to use this specific three quarters inch gra granite gravel product. And that's because of um, what is known as sort of the angle of repose. So the, and it's also the shape as well. So if you, if you go and you get river rock or pea gravel, pea gravel is too small. Pea gravel is too small and it doesn't create enough of a void space. Um, so that's, and, and a lot of pea gravel can be very round in shape. And then round smooth rocks. If you, if you have round smooth rocks together, these smooth surfaces, they slide off each other. They don't bind, they can't, they slide, they move against each other, they slide. Whereas if you get um, a three quarter inch, a craggy rock like these guys that have a bunch of angles and ridges and they're rough feeling, those guys, 
they bind. And you can do this at home and try this. They bind up together. And that, so these angled rocks here, angled rocks locks, right? So just remember angled rocks locks. And that way they're creating strength. And it's because as they fall in together, like you, you know, you put this rock in and then another rock falls down onto it and binds up, that's called the angle of repose. It's the angle where, it's basically the angle where they come to rest. And, um, and it's a locking angle. And so now you can see that, now look at this, Uncle Deshaun, look at me here. Now you can see that I've put these posts in for my posts that are gonna go on top of this wall. And they totally bound them up. They're in tight. And the masonry, it doesn't move hardly at all, even when I'm putting my weight against it. And so now you have this very, very heavy wall. It has a four inch channel behind it. So all of this dirt that's here, that's wet, that's holding water, it's dropping, it's dropping that water way back here. Water's never getting to the back of this wall. And then we also built a four inch channel underneath this. I dug a channel out underneath this four inches in depth beneath my bottom course. And I ensured that that channel, I took my hose and all through this entire area, I ensured that the water was gonna drain down. It drains from, away from my house or my garage down into the channel and then this channel brings the water along I checked this with my hose brings the water down and it drains it down to here and then it runs it through here through a gravel channel and then down and out along the wall and so everything through here is all draining away from the masonry and it's draining away from structures. And so uh, I hope that helps. I hope that's a good explanation of why it's so important to use three quarter inch granite gravel and angled craggy gravel with plenty of void space uh, to fill your masonry wall. Uh, thanks for tuning into Book of Instruction and I hope to see you here next time.